Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Wild Alligator Snapping Turtle. In Illinois, a team of experts made a rather bizarre discovery in the river. They found the very first wild alligator snapping turtle since 1984. It's been 30 years since someone has seen one of these turtles in Illinois, giving some hope for the state endangered species. The animal may have actually survived human interference and is now bouncing back without our intervention. That's one tough cookie. This creature looks like a terrifying beast and a prehistoric monster. The turtle can grow over two feet long and weigh over 220 pounds. Imagine only being that length with that kind of density. It's incredible. They can live over 70 years in the wild, defending themselves with jaws like a bear, a shell covered in spikes, and a scaly tail. Most people refer to them as the dinosaurs of the turtle world. They also happen to be exclusive river monsters, found throughout rivers and other waterways in the United States. There are myths that alligator snapping turtles love to attack people, but that's not really true. What they will do is bite your finger clean off. They have a bite force of 1,000 pounds, so they shouldn't really be handled. It was herpetologist Chris Phillips who found this newest snapping turtle at the bottom of Clear Creek. He had actually been looking for a young male snapping turtle with a transmitter on its back. The turtle had been released into the area as part of a human effort to regrow the turtle population. But when he pulled up the turtle, it wasn't the one he expected. It was a female turtle that had been alive for at least 18 years. She also had no tracking device, showing that turtles are already living in the area and seem to be doing well. Number 9. Killer Piranhas in January, just after the new year, four people were killed by a pack of savage piranhas as they were swimming in Paraguay. But what's truly terrifying is that they didn't all die at the same time. I'm talking about four different incidents. One occurred just after New Year's Eve on January 2nd, when a 22-year-old man vanished after visiting his family. After a brief manhunt, his body was found floating in the Paraguay River. He had been the victim of a vicious and deadly attack by piranhas. The second victim was also attacked on the Paraguay River, this time near the remote town of Puerto Rosario. A 49-year-old man went for a swim, then was quickly attacked by the aggressive fish. In the middle of the swarming, he began to have a heart attack. He then drowned and was bitten viciously by the piranhas. And finally, two other individuals were discovered dead and covered in piranha bites in a tributary of the Paraguay River called the Tebiquary. And these are only the deaths. Local news sources have revealed that there were at least 20 injuries sustained by piranha attacks in the weeks leading up to the deaths. At the Bella Vista Beach Club in the town of Itapua, piranha attacks have become such a frequent problem that the manager is now looking to use chemicals in the water to keep his visitors safe. Attacks on humans by piranhas are actually extremely rare. So what is causing this increase in attacks? Let me know your theories in the comments below. Number 8. A Cold Case A YouTuber named Jeremy Bow Sides actually discovered a car while diving in a Tennessee river. And it wasn't just any car, it was a car involved in a cold case. The vehicle belonged to a pair of teens who were last seen 21 years ago. Aaron Foster and Jeremy Betchel went missing on April 3rd, 2000. Aaron was just 18 years old and Jeremy was just 17. According to the White County Sheriff's Office, they vanished without a trace after leaving Aaron's home, and that was as far as anyone got in the case. Their whereabouts have remained a mystery for over two decades. But now they've been found, and all thanks to a guy with a camera who likes to upload videos on YouTube and go diving in his local rivers and he's quite a talented detective. He had actually searched for the missing teens before, first diving into a nearby lake in search of their missing 1998 Pontiac Grand Am, but he couldn't find them. He then turned his attention to the Calf Killer River, located just off the side of Highway 84 in the town of Sparta. Not long after being underwater, he came across a submerged vehicle, and that was when things got really scary. Through the windows, he spotted the remains of the two missing teens. They were still sitting in the car as if waiting to be rescued. What would you do if you spotted a car with bodies in a river? Jeremy kept cool. 
After he found them, he quickly informed the police. A team then showed up to investigate. The car was taken out of the river, and the families of the missing teenagers were finally given the answers they'd been hoping for so desperately over the past 20 years. Number 7. Massive Albino Catfish In a Missouri river, a fisherman caught one of the strangest and most bizarre catfish ever. It's not exactly terrifying in the sense that it might eat you or bite off your hand, but it's still rather creepy looking. I mean, they can crunch on your finger and slice or stab you with their fins, so you should still be careful. The fisherman's name is Kevin Markway, and he couldn't believe his luck when he reeled in an albino blue catfish. According to the Missouri Department of Conservation, albino blue catfish are just like any other albino creature. They have a recessive genetic trait that makes them pale white, a condition that almost always means they don't make it very far in life. Being almost fluorescent white is a sure way to get yourself eaten in any river. But somehow, this one managed to defy the odds and grow into an adult. Kevin was so impressed by the ghostly white fish that after he took a few pictures, he tossed it back into the river. Number 6. New Zealand's Terrifying Eels New Zealand has something slimy and creepy living in its rivers. It's a native species of eel that has been revered and feared throughout history and in more recent years, even tamed. There's even an attraction in the Tasman district, a small cafe in a rural neighborhood famous for its seafood chowder and its tame river eels. For just a few dollars, you can buy yourself a bit of meat on a stick, then head down to the river. Here you'll find a mass of blue-black eels all shiny and thick, wriggling over one another much like snakes in a den. You can use your stick to feed them like pets. These aren't small eels either. Some of them can be as thick and muscular as a person's arm. When you dangle a bit of meat over the writhing mass of eels with your stick, they erect themselves like cobras and snatch at it with their mouths. It's a scary sight to behold, and one that people have apparently lost interest in. After 30 years of business, the cafe where his bizarre excursion is possible has shut their operation down to just one day a week. This may have been a fun thing to do in the 90s, but it looks like people don't want to pay money anymore to feed a tangle of slimy sea worms. People have a love-hate relationship with eels. To some cultures like the Maori, they are magical creatures honored in legends and as a source of food, but for others, they are creepy and almost demonic. They have been both protected and slaughtered depending on the times. The eels here can grow up to 1.5 meters, making them quite the catch. While they look like vermin, they are actually quite interesting creatures. But I still don't think I want to go swimming with them. How about you? Number 5. Tongue-Eating Parasite In a Texas river, there lives a thing from your worst nightmare. Inside of an Atlantic croaker fish caught at the Galveston State Park, a fisherman found a tongue-eating parasite, a type of louse that has a unique and particularly disgusting function. This terrible monster is classified as a parasitic isopod. It's a relative of the pill bug that you can find in your garden, but this one has a dangerous trick up its sleeve. It's a parasitic monster that enters a living fish through its gills and then attaches itself to its tongue. The parasite then kills the tongue tissue until the tongue falls out. It then replaces the tongue, serving as a bizarre prosthetic for the fish and stealing its food. Whenever the fish eats something, the louse steals it because it's pretending to be its tongue. It even feeds on food that gets stuck in the fish's mucus. Yes, the parasite is revolting, but oddly enough, it's not actually deadly to the fish. Not necessarily. The fish can live for a really long time with the parasite in its mouth. It takes up just enough room to keep them both alive. After all, it's in the parasite's best interest not to kill its host. But still, quite the disturbing relationship. And in case you were wondering, it doesn't affect humans. You're not going to go for a swim in a Texas river and end up with a giant bug replacing your tongue. Don't worry. Number 4. The Haunted Ventriloquist Dummy In the Rio Grande, a creepy ventriloquist dummy was recently pulled out of the water. It was residents of a border town in Mexico who first noticed the thing, wrapped in a tarp and floating slowly down the river. Because the ventriloquist dummy is so big, about the size of a child, the local residents feared the worst. It looked as though a person had been killed, wrapped in a tarp, and dumped in the river. 
What they found instead was a relief, yet also terrifying in its own way. After they fished the floating object onto the riverbank and unwrapped the tarp, they found themselves staring at a ventriloquist dummy. It was badly worn, yet still somehow wearing its suit. One eye was bright blue, the other foggy and black. And to make matters worse, the thing didn't even have human hands. Whoever crafted it gave it vampire-like claws. No one knows why it was dumped into the Rio Grande, who made it, or even where it came from. But local residents were so freaked out that they weren't taking any chances. They quickly made a large bonfire and threw the ventriloquist dummy into the flames. Hopefully, burning the dummy will stop it from releasing whatever curse it might have contained. Number 3. Pesticides and Caffeine A shocking new study done by the U.S. Geological Survey has revealed alarming amounts of pesticides and pharmaceuticals in river water. Everything from insecticides to caffeine has apparently made its way into the rivers and streams of the United States. It's not that shocking, but it is pretty alarming to see it confirmed by a government agency. So what exactly does it mean? Or more importantly, how is this new information going to affect the health of living things, including the humans that get their water from the rivers? After all, rivers and streams supply much of the drinking water for U.S. citizens. Unfortunately, treatment facilities just aren't able to remove every single one of the contaminants identified in the study. Paul M. Bradley with the USGS says that the contaminants discovered are able to cause biological effects, even in very low doses. But the effects are pretty broad, and right now it's impossible to say what kind of damage they could cause in the long term. Paul and his colleagues sampled water from 35 different waterways, including three sites in remote areas far away from humans. They then checked for 719 chemical compounds. Over half of them were detected, or about 406 chemicals manufactured by people. These chemicals included eight different kinds of pesticides, two different pharmaceuticals, caffeine, and a drug called metformin that's used to treat type 2 diabetes. The takeaway here is that pretty much every river in the United States has a variety of chemicals slowly leaking into our drinking water and potentially poisoning every living thing. And if that's not a scary river discovery, I don't know what is. Number 2. Florida's River Monster As if Florida didn't have enough to worry about with invasive pythons, hungry crocodiles, green iguanas, and all the other invasive creatures that live in the swamps and Everglades, there is a new river beast threatening the ecosystem. It's a new invasive monster that can grow to be over 10 feet long. It's the Arapaima, a fish that can weigh hundreds of pounds and doesn't belong in Florida, but rather in the rivers of the Amazon jungle. These fish have been discovered in Florida rivers in recent years, and they are getting bigger. They can also jump out of the water and have actually knocked people out cold by hitting them in the face or chest. The discoveries are also getting more frequent, with Arapaima being pulled out of the Caloosahatchee River in Cape Coral not too long ago. Captain Josh Constantine, a fisherman who's fished the Caloosahatchee River for over 20 years, says he thinks it's kind of cool. But he also acknowledges that the sudden appearance of these dangerous fish in Florida could lead to the destruction of the entire ecosystem. These Amazon river monsters are some of the biggest predatory fish in the world, with scales about as impenetrable as metal armor. They have no natural predators and can breed rapidly. A single fish can lay thousands of eggs during its lifetime. Within the next 10 or 20 years, these invasive, non-native species could end up wiping out the rest of the indigenous fish in Florida's waterways. Number 1. The Boiling River Deep in the jungle of Peru lies the most terrifying river in the world. It's in the Amazon, far from civilization. It's actually so far from civilization that scientists only recently investigated and documented it. Local jungle dwellers had spoken of the deadly river for centuries, but it remained hidden from the outside world because it was nearly impossible to get to. But now, according to National Geographic, we know definitively that the Boiling River exists, and it's just as dangerous as the old legends say. Anything that goes into the river is boiled to death. It can reach temperatures of up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like a hot spring, except way too hot. 
making it dangerous and uninhabitable to most species. The entire river is only about five miles long, but only a small lower portion is heated. Mammals, reptiles, and amphibians that accidentally fall into the river are essentially boiled alive. But how in the world is this possible? It's obviously geothermal heat causing the water to boil. But the problem for scientists has been trying to find the source of the heat. There are no volcanoes nearby, nothing that would explain what's happening here. One theory is that there is some kind of volcanic feature or magma system deep under the earth, unknown to scientists. Water is being boiled inside this mysterious magma system, then pushed up to the surface where it flows boiling into the deadliest river in the world. Either that, or it's simply a natural feature, a geothermal pool with no volcanic origin. Thanks for watching! What's the scariest thing you found in a river? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!